Not all casual games are simple side-scrolling platformers. They come in all flavors, and while the emphasis is on their easy pick-up and play nature, that doesn't mean there's no challenge. And in this video, I'll showcase a wide variety of awesome indie games that you may have missed on the PS3. There were several shoot-em-ups on the PlayStation 3, but Resogen was published by Sony. You have complete control in this game and can fly in all directions. The main aim is to rescue or protect humans who are trapped in square voxels, but you also need to defend yourself from enemy fire. Contrast has flown under most people's radar, but it was quite a unique game back in the day. Players had to switch to the main character's shadow to overcome obstacles or climb to different areas. There was a strong emphasis on lighting, and this helped to make Contrast one of the better-looking indie titles on the console. Its best feature remains the clever puzzles, however. They're not overly difficult, but require some brain power. Machinarium hasn't been overlooked as much as it's been forgotten. For a while it was viewed as one of the better point-and-click adventures. It's probably the easiest game to run on the emulator, but it's also available on Steam for those of you who are interested. And I highly recommend that you give it a go, especially if the art style appeals to you. She puts it. There it goes. Oh, in one! I'm a true sucker for mini golf in real life and in video games, and Planet Mini Golf is awesome. It's not overly complex yet easy to get into. There are so many courses to try, you won't get bored for a while. The only issue I had was the sensitivity of the analog stick. You must use the left analog stick to swing the putter, and it's hard to measure exactly how hard to hit the ball, which can cause some frustration. Tower of Guns is a first-person shooter with roguelike elements. Thanks to its auto-generated levels, no playthrough is ever the same. Gameplay is mostly divided into arenas and boss fights, and the player must ascend towers to advance to the next levels. It's pretty fun. Toybox Turbos is a racing video game that borrows heavily from the Micro Machine series. Handling is appropriately chunky, with enough bounce to be fun, but enough traction so that you don't feel out of control. It does have Mario Kart style weapon power-ups, which helps to make it unique. Neon is a reboot of the original Double Dragon games and was the first to be developed by a Western studio. Despite using a modern engine, the mood reminded me of Double Dragon for the arcades. The combat system is very rewarding, allowing power-ups when the player dodges enemy attacks. Cube is a puzzle game that takes inspiration from Portal, but it distinguishes itself in some ways. First of all, the player relies on gloves to manipulate blocks, and these blocks are made up of different colors, indicating that they behave differently from each other. Interestingly, Cube was supposed to be a student project, but it gradually evolved into a full-fledged game. Even more incredible, none of the developers knew how to code, which makes this achievement all the more fantastic. The Unfinished Swan is easily the most innovative game in this list. Essentially, the world around you is invisible, and you have to use black ink to see where you're going. For a long time, it was exclusive on the PlayStation Store, although now it is available on Windows. You can't go wrong with this one.
Papo and Yo takes place in an unspecified Brazilian favela. There's a sense of childlike imagination at play here, and clearly the developers tried to make you think about the world surrounding the player. The only drawback is a fairly short single-player story. But as long as it lasts, the game is extraordinary in its imagination and execution. Dragon Fin Soup is a role-playing game with rogue-like qualities and isometric graphics. Combat and movement take place in turns, with both the player and enemies taking actions during each turn. The developers funded the game through Kickstarter in 2014. After they concluded the base game, plans for further expansions were cancelled by the developers. However, it's still engrossing enough for most gamers. Super Stardust HD was by far the best exclusive on the PlayStation Network. It had colorful graphics, great particle effects, and it had perfect fast-paced gameplay. Until recently, I wasn't even aware that there's a PSP port, but that just goes to show how popular the game was. These are the games I liked, but here are a few more that just missed out on my list. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.